You might not understand. It's not common knowledge. There's no institutional educational program to teach you how to live on the land. There's no book to teach you to maintain nomadicism on horseback in the landscape. But it does and still exists. I'm doing what I was taught and sharing what I know because the greatest gift we got is this earth we call home. You might see us in town, but we're just passing through. And you might see us on the highway when it's necessary for us to. While we bring the horses to new grass, they carry our comforts on their backs. Some days are difficult, hard and long, but we don't get to quit. We don't get to stop. There is no breaks. And that's okay. Because it's a good life. And here's where we'll stay. First I'ma say all the words inside my head I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been Oh, ooh, the way that things have been Oh, ooh Second thing, second, don't you tell me what you think that I can be I'm the one at the scene, I'm the master of my sea Oh, ooh, the master of my sea Took my first breath where the muddy rises spills into the Gulf of Mexico where the skyline's colored by chemical plants that put bread on the table of the working man where the working man does his best to provide safety and shelter for kids and a wife giving a little of a soul every day Shades of black is where I come from Depression, misery, and hellacious fun No word Are we still wild and free? If it's just a memory Tell me why you think of me We live on horseback, 
All of our horses are Mustangs that we raised and trained ourselves. It takes about two hours to gather the horses and saddle them up and pack them for a day's ride. We have three pack horses altogether and two riding horses. Travel days require a lot of effort and energy, but it's rewarding. Manders and I have been riding together for two years now. I've been living this way since I was 23 years old and I'm 32. Manders just turned 30. When we get to the next camp, we have to do everything in reverse. And the horses always come first, so we unpack them right away. And once they're unpacked, it's important to put them on grass. We picket the horses. With five, we can have three picketed and two run loose. And then we can rotate who gets to be loose. A full day's travel takes about eight hours. It's a lot of work. And after the horses are cared for, we can set up our shelter. And once our shelter is up, we can filter water and we can start to make food and make our beds and settle into camp. Gathering firewood, there's a lot to it, but it's rewarding. Hi there, Woos Mummy. Um, this is a really good question, so I finally have time to talk about it. Of course, like with any topic, there is no sweeping generalization that we can make for all tribes. Um, so I'm just gonna speak from my perspective because I'm not a historian. Um, if you are in search of a good historian to go and ask this question to, I would highly recommend uh, Diamond Dog. I will tag her in the comments. My donkey just really wanted to tell me that she loves me right now. So the answer is they did and they didn't. Some tribes and some people did use saddles and some did not. Some used just saddle blankets made from buffalo hide or deer hide. Um, and some simply rode bareback. Two of the key differences to keep in mind when we think about how the horses were maintained at that time are what they were being used for and culture. So the horse wasn't being saddled and ridden for eight to 10 hours a day at a time because they were preparing for a cutting and reining show or they weren't practicing show jumping and eventing. You know, uh, the horses were used in war and to travel from place to place. When they would travel from place to place, um, the horses were typically used to carry supplies and oftentimes not even on their back. They would be dragged behind. But when they were ridden, it was on for a few miles and off for a few miles, on for a few miles, off for a few miles, as much as the rider and the horse could withstand. The second aspect is culture. Um, for many tribes, horses are a huge part of culture and they're considered to be part of the family. And the way you would treat your horse was a large reflection of who you were and what quality or type of person you were. In fact, I've been told stories of horses um, causing marital spats because the war ponies would sleep inside and leave no room for the wife and kids, essentially. So here is one example of an indigenous made saddle tree, and this is made from rawhide and deer antlers. So we did make and produce our own equipment and the style and way in which horses were ridden and trained really depended from tribe to tribe and person to person. My tribe specifically primarily used saddle blankets and war bridles as equipment. I think one of the reasons for the horses maintaining such a great health for so many years is because they were able to maintain a natural lifestyle. They weren't stalled 24 seven and they were able to eat range grasses and forage whenever they wanted. A lot of the back issues we see in horses today are a result of poor breeding and improperly fitted equipment. And we didn't have those. <laughs>